guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fuck Skin Crew. So we're back with the ying part of the reading. Uh, so this is the feminine for December the 7th until the 15th. So this is just a continuation or an energy update for the reading I did two days ago, the Twin Flame reading. Uh, so I asked the question, I posed the question to the Divine Masculine, which I did first, um, and I'm posing the same question to the feminine. Oh. Card is trying to sneak in there. Um, so the question is, are you awake? Uh, who was awakened first, the masculine or the feminine? Are we awake together? Are we on this journey together? Um, you know, what do you want the world to know? Okay, so let, I'm going to pull the cards, look at them, and then we'll go through the positions. So I'm using the Tarot Illuminati, so the Six of Swords. So I'm doing the crystal ball, which is a 5x5 five five grid, distant past, recent past, present, near future, or sorry, um, yeah, near future, and then final outcome, four cornerstone cards, which is the main energy of the reading, and then one center card, which is the main message from the universe. So we got the Six of Swords, the, um, the Page of Pentacles, the Five of Swords, the Princess of Wands, so we got the Princess of Pentacles, Princess of Wands, so those are pages, and the Eight of Wands. Interesting. Okay, so the, the Six of Swords is moving to a calmer state of mind. Uh, the feminine seems to be plagued with uh, a lot of negative thoughts, a lot of negative energy, and so, you know, she feels that she she's seeking stillness right she's moved to a calmer space uh the page of pentacles or princess of pentacles is either communicating in the 3d or a new start in the 3d so what i really f am seeing very strongly is this energy of two pages which is um beginning you know the page of wands is a new beginning in the, in the spiritual realm, right? It's the beginning a new adventure. The masculine got this card um, in the near future. So it is embarking on a new adventure, more in line with your higher calling, your spirituality. But then we got this Five of Swords in the middle, right? So we got two feminine energy and a Five of Swords. So the Five of Swords is conflict, defeat. It is negative energy, negative finger pointing, blame, humiliation. Okay, so the, I feel that in the feminine's eyes, there's this vibration of deceit, of conflict, of um, not being able to trust, feeling like, you know, um, battling energy, right? Um, maybe the masculine holds these wands that are cutting, are painful. And she stands on either side of them and is offering this new life, this new beginning, be, beginning. There's so much growth, so much stability, so much hope for the future, right? It's, it's beautiful how the, um, you know, the Princess of Pentacles is offering the gift to the masculine in the energy same way uh, for the Princess of Wands. And... So the Eight of Wands in the past, or sorry, um, as a cornerstone card, distant past. Uh, so the masculine actually got, I believe, the same card in that position. Um, actually, not in that position. She got, he got it with the uh, Queen of Swords, right? So synchronicity. There's conflict, um, chaos around communication. So this is Cupid's arrows. Uh, it's communication by air. It's accelerated motion. It's things speeding up. Right? So, so what I feel is just a movement to 
trust, optimism, and love. But there, there's this gift, this sense of um, being surrounded by positive energy and new beginnings. But the, she views the masculine as being in this um, neg negative energy space, and she's trying to help him move to a more positive space or vice versa, right? This is just a projection of her energy, of her thoughts, of her beliefs, right? So it doesn't necessarily have... You know, it's not necessarily true for the masculine. All right, so next is going to be the Witch's Tarot. So this is the recent past. Whoa, okay, stop. All right. So, wow, the Ten of Swords again. The masculine got that twice in his reading. The High Priest. The Sun card. Wow, the Lovers. The masculine got the Lovers um, in the as the final outcome and the empress wow very cool okay so we do have a progression here from the six to the ten of swords uh so i read the rebirth card in the divine masculine's reading uh so this is you know in the osho zen it depicts different le levels of of awakening right there's a camel the lion, and then the child, which represents pure innocence. So this is the dark night of the soul. This is complete ending, feeling betrayed, stabbed in the back, left for dead. All right, so the ten is completion of this energy. Um, and then we have the high priest beside that. So this is the divine masculine. I like to see this as the Divine Masculine embodying this 5D energy of being a spiritual leader, being conscious, right? So it's kind of giving credence to the fact that maybe the Masculine was already awake, was already um, a spiritual leader onto himself and maybe helping other people raise their consciousness, right? So from this deep betrayal and darkness you met somebody who opened you up spiritually and returned you to the state of pure innocence, right? That's what the sun card is. And if you look at the, the Divine Masculine or Yang reading, the ultimate level of awareness is that childlike purity, right? So... Um, this is the most positive card in the deck and it's almost like the masculine came to her in this pure state as this spiritual leader there was this you know innocence and purity stemming from wisdom as as well f as from you know the inner child right and the feminine knew in an instant that he was her true love her twin flame Right, and so again, kind of repeating that energy that you felt with the masculine, that they truly fell in love, and the love was deep. This is very passionate love. Um, but there is a longing energy to this card. So you can see how this love, this return to innocence, this spiritual um, illumination and, and connectedness, you know, came from a very dark place, but it, it brought her to this place of authenticity. The Empress is the Divine Feminine, the Yin energy. This is what he taught her, right? To trust and love and, um, you know, that this love is true and pure Right, and I also read this lover's card in the Osho Zen. You know, the lover's card is about, you know, not that sexual, uh, you know, love isn't sex. You know, love comes from this place of compassion. Um, and the d divine feminine, or yin, is the embodiment of that energy. She is compassion. She is nurturing. She is the creator, the, sc the stargate that bursts us into the 3D reality, right? So this is this card is also about manifestation, 
All right, and so you can see the Cupid's arrows raining down on her, love raining down on both of them. And so there is this acknowledgement by the feminine of how this connection, you know, brought her into this beautiful place of, of self-love and knowing of your divinity, right? There's so much authenticity here. Like this connection makes her feel real, pure, innocent, right? And free. There's this new beginning that is just on the horizon. And the sun is also masculine energy, yang, yin and yang, right? Very cool synchronicity spirit. Thank you. Okay, so now we're moving on to the present moment. Feminine collective, how are you feeling in the present moment? What are your challenges? What are your desires? What are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are your challenges? What are your dreams? What are your hopes? What are your fears? The Hermit. Strength card. The Queen of Pentacles. So this is zero point card, message from the universe. Wow, the Queen of Cups. And the Star card. So the masculine also got the Star card. Wish granted. Uh, it was a confirmation card for, I think, the uh, Cornerstone. I can't remember what that was. Oh my God. Um, okay, so the Hermit. So what I see here is the feminine strength being represented once again. However, there is a growth, right? We got the the messengers, or sorry, the uh, the pages, but they're actually princesses, okay? And the princesses are now queens in the present moment. Um, and she's being represented as a strength card, okay? So um, the hermit... I feel is both their energy. I mean, I feel like I'm in the hermit mode right now. Um, I'm always on a spiritual journey to attain wisdom. Um, but since it is masculine energy here, I'm going to read this as the yang. So the feminine is looking at the masculine. These are two major arcanas. Okay, and so... The masculine is at the top of a mountain, and he's using his inner light to guide him. Um, so there's a sense of a high level of attainment, right? He's at the top of a mountain, looking down um, at those around him. So he is uplifted. He is, um, and I'm, I'm noticing the stars and sky, right? There's this sense that they're both at a, the same level. Um, the feminine strength card is about using love, kindness, compassion, gentle, nurturing energy. Again, that nurturing energy that transforms um, a connection into love, right? It isn't all about sex and passion. It is about love um, coming from compassion and gentle, nurturing energy. So I see a very peaceful energy here. I see the feminine looking at the masculine and seeing how he is on that journey, that he is wise um, and she's providing strength for the masculine to to you know they're both providing guidance. Notice how they're both facing each other, right? He's lighting her way and she's there to um, provide strength for him and, and vice versa. I really feel it goes both ways. <clears throat> so the present position center card message from the universe is the Queen of Pentacles. So this is Mother Earth. Uh, this is somebody who is very independent, very grounded, very successful, enjo enjoys luxury. Um, but she's very given and, and open, okay? And so the masculine got this card in the final outcome, but it represented a whole man, somebody who is complete and whole all around, right? So this is also a very um, grounded energy. It's harvest as well. So there's this 
great sense of achievement that the feminine has attained in the 3D reality. Now, this attainment does not come necessarily from material possessions. It comes from uh, a deep knowing in herself, a deep love of herself, um, and how she she is here to nurture. She is Mother Earth, right? She is the caregiver. So again, more loving energy and supportive energy. The Queen of Cups, same thing. She gives unconditional love. She is also intuitive, um, but really this is connecting with the heart space and um, loving, gentle, nurturing, caregiver, unconditional love. And it's right below the lover's card. And they're both looking to the future. Okay, they're both optimistic. Um, the strength card is looking to the past, but there's this 5D connection that I see here. It's, you know, this deep bond on a spiritual level, this uh, commitment to one another, this, um, you know, helping each other grow. Um, but in the present moment, she's also looking to the future to the future she is awaiting her love to come back she is focused on you know manifestation um, and they're both also looking at the star card which is wish granted wish is coming true and this is also a very um, gentle nurturing healing energy it comes after a very difficult period of time so she is healing she is in a state of rest and peace very hopeful that's it this card is hope for the future optimism okay so next is going to be the gilded rider weight deck wow the ten of swords again that i think this is the same position right that the masculine got it in justice very nice um, seven of Wands, the masculine got that as well. The Queen of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, awesome! Oh my God, awesome! All right, so the the Ten Ten of Swords again, same card up here. It's repeated on the same row. Um, so, you know, again, rebirth, an ending, dark night of the soul, constant death and rebirth, that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, so, feeling betrayed, but again, the Ten of Swords is the ending. Um, and there, there is a karmic return here. Justice will be served. Um, here we have the Hierophant who represents this direct connection to source, right? He downloads, downloads information. He, um, he shares that wisdom for all. Um, he holds the keys. And here, justice is a feminine energy, but it's a return of that. It's a balance of the cosmic scale. Um, you know, it's... It is the cosmos, right? And so he's, he's, it's almost like in this ethereal way, he's kind of pointing to justice, to the heavens, to, to that karmic return. Um, but what I feel here is just a, a very positive karmic energy um, saying, you know, justice will be served. There, there was an injustice in the past. You felt this betrayal, and it's coming up again and again and again, right? And, um, yeah, so usually when this shows up, it means that everything's going to work out in your favor. And that was a theme in the, the Twin Flame reading that I did, right? It's like that power, that strength, hang in there, right? I'm... I, there are people who are challenging me. I'm finding my strength, my courage to stand up to them, to find my freedom. 
and that is justice, that energy is you know it's like there are a lot of things that this masculine is still contending with, a lot of like thoughts, a lot of fears, a lot of competition and it's like that's all his focus is, is on what what is coming at him, right? And it's like the feminine's kind of getting bored and looking the other way. He's like, well, this is what I got to do to get to you. And it's like, well, whatever, dude, you know what I mean? It's like, um, show up when you show up, um, when you're ready. I'm over here doing my thing, right? The queen of wands is the queen of no fucks given. The masculine comes to her. She doesn't go out and seek the attention of the masculine, right? It's she's very charismatic, the sun, the center of attention. Um, so again, there's a sense of confidence, lack of confidence. Um, maybe there was betrayals in the past that the masculine is, is trying to overcome, right? So there's 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 a a separation. There's something separating them. But there's a sense of the masculine moving forward towards her. So she's concentrating on the Ten of Pentacles. That's what she's looking at. The Ten of Pentacles is a completion, long-term goal manifested into her reality. So we have the Queen of Pentacles in the center position, right beside the, the Queen of Cups. And so now we got the Queen of Wands with the Ten of Pentacles. So there's this major material manifestation, abundance flowing into her life, very grounded energy. But she is living her life purpose. The Queen of Wands, very passionate, very driven, very, um, you know, leader, spiritual leader energy as well. So he's there's a sense of frustration, right, to be noticed or to... Um, overcome karma's on his side right and that's why he's moved from the 10 to the 7 I almost feel like that's his energy right because it's always right beside this it's always beside a masculine energy showing his betrayal his pain but I don't doubt that the feminine has felt that way but you can see the sense of you guys both moving to calmer waters to stillness to peace but there's all these swords that are being brought with the two of you, right? And there's a detachment in order to gain wisdom and clarity through solitude. And then it comes up again, right? But this time that energy is cleared away, right? It's like he's taken that ace of wands and, you know, he's fighting people off. He's fighting off thoughts. He's fighting off any kind of obstacles in his way and his mission is to be with the Queen of Wands. Okay, so the final row I'm using the Osho Zen and I will read each card position because I just absolutely love this deck. It always um, gives us exactly what we need to hear. Okay, so Cornerstone card, Guidance, very nice. The Two of Pentacles, so that was the Three of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, it's about 3D reality. The Five of Cups. Wow. Conditioning. And nice. Courage. Oh my God. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. So, what I see here is divine guidance, right? Shifting and changing reality. Um, again, being stuck in the mind, the masculine got this card in a similar position, uh, but this is emotional baggage. And then we got that rebirth, right, with the line, but you're realizing you are the line amongst the sheep. And then courage is that same strength card. Love, kindness is true love. That's where true love comes from, is compassion. Um, so the Three of Pentacles first. Okay, so 
The angelic figure with the rainbow colored wings on this card represents a guide that each of us carries within. Like the second figure in the background, we may sometimes be a little reluctant to trust the guide when it comes to us because we are so accustomed to taking our cues from the outside rather than from the inside. The truth of our own deepest being is trying to show you where to go right now. And when this card appears, it means you can trust the inner guidance you're being given. It speaks in whispers, and sometimes we can hesitate not knowing if we have understood rightly. But the indications are clear. In following the inner guide, you will feel more whole, more integrated, as if we are moving outward from the very center of our being. If we go with it, the beam of light will carry you exactly where you need to go. So trust, right? And, you know, not only, you know, and it's really kind of pointing to this guidance that I see shared between the two aspects in the 5D reality, um, right? And so that theme of guidance being there, support, you know, in the 5D is definitely being repeated. Okay, so the Two of Pentacles. So that was the cornerstone card. So inner guidance, divine guidance also is the major energy, right? And that's what brings you to this, this sense of, um, you know, awakening from the machine, realizing your power. You become strength, which is actually, you know, the same card. It's a line, right? Um, but there is that added element of the child, free, innocent, pure, um, you know, which is the final stage of illumination, is returning to this childlike state. We see that element kind of me missing up here, but um, ultimately, um, you know, that's what we are doing, right? We're all waking up. We're all at, <clears throat> at different levels. Okay, so as this figure moves across the stones, he steps lightly and non-seriously. At the same time, absolutely balanced and alert. Behind the swirling, ever-changing waters, we can see the shapes of buildings. There piece appears to be a city in the background. The man is in a marketplace, but at the same time outside of it, maintaining his balance and able to watch it from above. This card challenges us to move away from our preoccupation preoccupations with other spaces and other times and stay alert to what is happening in the here and now. Life is a great ocean in which we in which you can play if you drop all the judgments, your preferences and attachments to the details of your long-term plans. Be available to what comes your way as it comes and don't <clears throat> worry about if you stumble or fall, just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and have a good laugh and carry on. Wow, right? P pick yourself up, dust yourself off, right, and carry on. Um, but really, this, this balance, there's this struggle with the outside world causing imbalance within, but using your internal guidance um, to show you the way, to guide your way. Okay, so the Five of Cups. So the figure pictured in this card is preoccupied with clutching her box of memories that she has turned her back on the sparkling champagne glass of blessings available here and now. Her nostalgia for the past really makes her a blockhead and a beggar besides, as we can see from her patched and ragged clothes. She needn't be a beggar, of course, but she is not available to taste the pleasures that offer themselves to the present. It's time to face up to the fact that the past is gone, and any effort to repeat it is a sure way to stay stuck in the old blueprints that you would have already upgrown if you hadn't been so busy clinging to what you have already been through. Take a deep breath. Put the box down, tie it up in a pretty ribbon if you must, and bid it a fond farewell. Um, life is passing you by, and you're in danger of becoming an old fossil before your time. Right, so the feminine, you can see that conflict, you know, that, that mental conflict that she's been trying to 
move away from, um, you know, culminates in this awakening. And you can see that with the conditioning cards. So you read that. So it's a major arcana. <clears throat> Sorry, it's really dry in here. Okay, so this card recalls an old Zen story about a lion who was brought up by sheep and who thought he was a sheep until he until an old <clears throat> sorry an old lion captured him and took him to a pond where he showed him his own reflection many of us are like the lion the image we have of ourselves comes from our own direct experience uh, sorry not from our own direct experience but from the opinions of others a personality imposed on us re from the outside replaces the individuality that we could have grown from within we become just another sheep in the herd, unable to move freely and unconscious of our own true identity. It's time to take a look at your own reflection in the pool and make a move to break out of whatever you have been conditioned by others to believe about yourself. Dance, run, jog, do gibberish, whatever is needed to wake up the sleeping lion within. So, right, we're... I do feel that the feminine really connected with herself on a, you know, a very divine, pure level in the past. And she's losing sight of her power and struggling with that. But ultimately, you know, she is regaining, she is awakening to her power, to her strength. And it's because of this connection. Okay, so the strength card is called Courage. Okay, so this card shows a small wildflower that has met the challenge of the rocks and stones in its path and emerges into the light of day. Surrounded by an aura of bright golden light, it expresses the majesty of its tiny, tiny self, unashamed. It is equal to the brightest sun. Oh my God, right? It becomes the sun, unashamed. It, it awakens it exposes the majesty of its tiny self, unashamed. Wow. Um, so when we are faced with a very difficult situation, we have a choice. We can either be resentful and try to find somebody to, or something to blame for the hardship, or we can face a challenge and grow. The flower shows us the way as its passion for life leads it out of darkness and into the light. There is no point fighting against the challenge of life or trying to avoid or deny them. They are there. And if the seed is to become the flower, we must grow with them. Be courageous enough to grow into a flower you're meant to be. Wow. So reclaim that power. Believe it in who you are as the divine masculine yin, right? Strength, courage. So, I mean, this shows our growth, right? It, it beautifully reflects the energy or, or the journey that the feminine has been on. And so, as a collective, there's still some learning to be had. All right. Um, so I'm going to pull one card from Nist and Mermaids. So this will be the final message from the universe. Mermaid with a golden dragon. Wow, and very similar um, kind of body language as the masculine's card. And I remember that in the twin flame reading, there was that kind of same feeling of them in this pose, right? Um, anyway, so mermaid with a golden dragon, a golden beast did I spy while swimming aimless, idling by what a treasure, what a prize to capture my eager eyes, a pet to cherish, precious, bright, shining with such honey eyed light, good luck, great fortune to adore. I'll guard my gold forevermore. So 
it's kind of pointing to that that point where you just felt on top of the world right with that love and drew out this divinity within you you know and, and your wishes and dreams are coming true right and you're you're finding you are becoming the sun um but anyway i can't remember where i was going with that okay so a sweet young mermaid looks over her newfound treasure a tiny baby dragon his golden scales emit a radiance of wealth and prosperity as he nestles among the water lilies in the lake so the meaning is look forward to prosperity good news your hard work and careful planning are soon to pay off while it is exciting to contemplate your new success it is important to keep your head remember that with wealth comes responsibility if you're not careful with your money it may soon be gone do not give in to temp temptation to spend quickly and avoid falling victim to bad investment instead remember your long-term goals and choose a path that is consistent with wish with what you wish to accomplish in life just the same it's okay to splurge a little you deserve it wow right so it's pointing right to that ten pentacles your wishes and dreams are coming to your you're coming to this point where abundance are, is going to be flowing into your life um, so don't give up hang in there and continue clearing this energy from your space all right so i do hope this helped you guys um i'm sending you big hugs and lots of love right cheers